Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we're going to start off by following the Uranus Ambassador as it passes by Saturn on its way to Uranus of course getting a boost from Saturn and we'll make sure that it gets the correct boost but otherwise I don't want to launch anything new until we clear up some of these old missions and make sure that they come to fruition and then we can launch some other stuff so just trying to clear out the deck and especially bring the Mars mission back home and so here we are so ignore the Delta V reading for this maneuver that's because we're going to get the boost from Saturn and it's not reading that properly we're gonna time warp into Saturn's SOI I don't know if there's any science that we can do that we haven't done before it's doubtful but we'll check okay now it's reading the actual correction that we're going to do in a year and 347 days which is just 14 meters per second but let's check on the the sciences mm, if it'll let me well that one we can do log nope uh, I don't know why I can't click on the RPWS antenna okay well um, I want to save the goo for when we get there let's see RPWS is probably the most likely one that we haven't done before but I can't click on it oh there we go yep, and we have not done it before good times 72 extra science for checking otherwise I think we've done everything so but let's uh, head closer to Saturn and see what we get also let's make sure that the current correction afterwards does get us to Uranus it does seem to a nice low Uranus pass where is Saturn though well anyway uh, let's do the thing and we might have to fix our maneuver afterwards fortunately we have 3000 meters per second in this probe so no problems there I'm also functionally killing time as we complete certain technologies okay well there's Saturn I don't know if we're low over Saturn per se but let's just try running some instruments again nope still says high over Saturn at this level this is as close as we get and oh this is just above so we happen to be just barely close enough to get some other readings that one doesn't count this one does though temperature is good pressure I don't know why we have oh that just has the wrong tag and gravity scan so that's good got some decent science around Saturn okay with that done let's just adjust our mid-course adjustment I don't know if I trust that this is the correct result of this burn here let's double check yeah it's totally different now I forget if I wanted to go polar or not. I, I guess technically going like this is more going polar and then we'd have to go what would normally be a 90 degree inclination in order to get quote unquote equatorial around Uranus. But without any moons around, it doesn't really matter, does it? I guess we could scan more biomes going like this. So this mid-course adjustment is going to cost a little bit more than I originally planned, but that's all right. Let's make sure that we have an updated updated alarm for it. And that's all good. Okay, it is on its way, and we'll see it again in slightly under two years. So departing Saturn and it is finally time to turn back to our Mars mission 
and try and get them back home. Okay, I have time warp to the return window, the window from Mars to Earth, and we are now 21 hours away. I did queue up some additional missions uh, to be constructed, and those were all for the Earth to Mars window, 84 days away. And so we've built a few new versions of Marsport 1, a uh, new version of Ares Pod G. Um, that will just test out uncrewed, so we're not going to try and land more Kerbals on the moon on this go, but we'll see if uh, we can get that right without any Kerbals on board. A uh, new light lander, those worked pretty darn well, so I didn't mind sending another one of those over to Mars. And uh, a Mars base one, that did not work so well. Uh, I've adjusted a few things, but maybe it won't work. We'll see. Um, Ares Pod G2, another one. And uh, Arizine and N204 depot, because we had sent a UDMH depot because that was necessary for the... Ares Pod A, the return vehicle, but we never sent additional Aerozine or N204 supplies, so we'll do that this time. And actually, that's because the Marsport one already has extra Aerozine and N204 on board, so we'll be sending a lot of extra fuel like that. So, uh, with that being constructed, uh, let's turn to the mission that we're trying to bring back. Okay, so it's finished rebalancing the food, water, and oxygen, and if we take a look, it says we have a year and 300 days worth of food, water, and oxygen on Marsport 1. Uh, that ends up being, more. let's just say, more than 600 days for margin. And uh, that is 8,000 food gives us that much life support. So if we take a look at in here, uh, this is the actual uh, main life support tank, and here we have more than 4,000. So we have more than half of the food, water, and oxygen of the station in Ares Pod A itself, so we have more than 300 days worth. So, yeah, we have the margin. We only really need 210 days. We're probably carrying too much, but let's just carry too much, it'll be fine. Uh, now, this is meant to uh, capture using this heat shield, so it separates at this decoupler, and that'll be good because this, of course, only had enough ablator for Mars capture, and so we're shedding all of this, and then we'll just be a little uh, Gemini capsule and the docking port and hopefully that'll be good enough. This is has, uh, this is the best heat tolerance we can expect out of a heat shield in uh, in Kerbal Space Program with Realism Overhaul right now. The Soyuz heat shield is, uh, is a lunar rated heat shield just like uh, the other lunar rated heat shields so hopefully it'll be enough but I don't know. I am nervous about that but at least we're not trying to like capture all of this though it would have been mostly empty by the time we get there right uh, the actual heat shield loading would have been comparatively low since this will be empty and this will be mostly empty so yeah anyway but concerns are there we do have both Kerbals inside Ares Pod A right now but before we separate it I wanted to check because we have sort of a lopsided orbit and I want to know whether well, where exactly our burn to exit will be. Because if it's out here, it's going to be very inefficient. So, maneuver planner, um, advanced transfer to another planet, and we're going to select Earth, and let's see where it wants us to do the burn to exit. Create node. Well, it's going to cost 2300 it says. It is in a bad place, basically the worst place. So we'd actually do better just sort of bringing our orbit down. But I think we have enough. Oh, wait, this says node in two years. Oh, that's not good. Um, no, let's do ASAP. Hmm, 2500 and it wants us to burn there. So I don't like this whole situation. 2,500 is probably more than we have. And we're going to be burning from there. It'd be much better to use some other fuel to bring our orbit down. Though it's going to be awkward, we'll use the UDMH depot if we can dock it to the Ares Pod A. That was basically one reason why I had it along, right? So, Ares Pod A has a docking port propellant only there. Oh, yeah, it's thrusters we facing this. But, 
but we don't need to use its thrusters. Once it's docked, we can just shut these off and use the thrusters down here and feed the fuel through. It is a propellant docking port, so that should work. So that will be the plan. Okay. All right. So we have some undockings and redockings to do. Now let me make sure that we've locked. So we've locked this fuel, and this is the return fuel. Uh, we should also lock the Gemini cabin fuel for orientation while we're re-entering. This fuel we'll use for the maneuvers to re uh, to dock with this, though this can handle that part too. Okay, well, here goes nothing. Okay, let's verify that we have enough... Oh, wow, we have a year and a few days, so... We really should get some of that back in here, but let's just get on with it. We're sending more supplies soon anyway. And we are not sending any more Kerbals on the new window, so... Okay, let me extend panels. Well, let's verify exactly how much fuel we have here. 3,000... Okay, actually it has 3,000 meters per second. We could exit on the trajectory that's given us. Hmm. And the reason, I, I thought we had less, but of course that was calculated with the full food, water, and oxygen tanks. This has depleted most of its food, water, and oxygen, so now it has a lot more delta V. So let, let's take a look at this, and uh, okay, let's plot that maneuver again. Did it look like a good approach, or would it be coming in fast, for instance? I don't want to, okay, uh, select this target Earth. Yeah, I don't want it to come in fast at Earth. Uh, if possible, we want as slow an approach as as we can manage. Create node. So let's take a look at this orbit. So we're exiting here. It says Earth encounter in 340 days. Well, that seems pretty slow, isn't it? Seems like we're taking our time there. Maybe that's good. I mean, we have the food, water, and oxygen, right? We certainly have 340 days worth. And we apparently have the Delta V. I wish we could see how fast we were at periapsis when I actually get a periapsis here. That would be really good information for them to show. But no, that is not information that is shown. Oh, we'll take that for now. Probably we'll have to do corrections, but that no, Delta V wise, we have that. Hmm. Well, it says 3,000 meters per second. And this is a nice slow approach, I think. And we'll have enough food, water, and oxygen, so maybe we'll do this. Right? Right. Yeah, let's not have any more complicated redocking or anything like that. Let's lock this fuel for now. It's still enough. We're not facing the sun at all, and still our electric charge situation is not bad. But for the time being, let's just point towards the sun. When you look at this, it's quite a rough burn we're aiming for here. And of course, it's the whole idea that uh, it pretends that it's all going to be instantaneous. Mm, now we got a point at Marsport 1. Not quite. Close, but not quite. Alright. Well, here goes nothing. Ignition. Marsport 1 has been an excellent home for these Kerbals. 
but I'm sure they want to get back to Earth. Okay, let's take a look at the track here as the burn is almost done. Uh, seems like we're on it, right? That, that looks pretty much like where we need to be. We don't need surface info anymore. Looks like the burn was done with reasonable accuracy. Amazingly enough. Okay, but uh, let's see what's happening at the Earth end of things. We seem to have an Earth encounter. That's, uh, relief. <laughs> this is not the fastest trip we could have taken home, but hopefully that's not a big problem. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's see, fine-tune a bit. We may have to think about uh, launching some additional assets to help out if there ends up being difficulty. But there we have a nice periapsis into Earth's atmosphere directly, so no mid-course adjustment is necessary. And in time as far as life support is concerned. So, they're on their way back. Uh, we might as well See, uh, I did put a little reaction wheel somewhere around here, right? It seems to be turning, so yes. So we'll, I don't want to mess up the approach to Earth, so I'll let the reaction wheel turn it to the correct direction to make sure we are recharging. And of course, we will add an alarm. Not for that SOI, I guess we'll have to make a dummy maneuver. Uh, let's have it be a little bit ahead of the actual entry into Earth SOI, if it'll let me. Uh, no, it's not going to let me. Let me switch back to this. Will it let me now? Nope. But it'll let me make one here, so I'll add a maneuver there. That doesn't give us a whole lot. Well, it gives us a couple of days, so it'll be all right. Add that alarm. We are recharging. So, Philippe and Newcast on their way back home. You don't need to worry about these Mars to Earth transfer windows anymore. And, yeah. Now let's take care of some of this other business before we get to the window to launch the stuff to Mars again. So let's just take a look at some of these maneuver nodes that we've got plotted. Okay, the first maneuver that had been on the alarm clock was actually a dud. It's actually this exomoon explorer that we need to pay attention in 204 days, not 24 days. So we really didn't need to turn to it just yet. Uh, this is a Jovian demon, and so we need to take care of it in 33 days, and I'll just time warp along with it to do its burn. Okay... We should be close enough, given the grand scheme of the whole orbit. Uh, one hour away is not too bad. Let's get on with it. Now, I am of two minds about whether to launch stuff on this uh, next Earth to Mars window, since I'm basically wanting to clear stuff up and have a clean slate. So I don't know, we'll save that decision for the next episode, whether I actually launch those things right there, or whether I hold off on it. If we take a look actually at transfer window planner and different Mars windows and we'll say no insertion burn. That's the next one and then if we go two years out that's the one after that we can add that alarm. But in the late 80s the opportunities aren't that great. Well, that one's pretty good. I thought they weren't that great, but that's not bad. Let's add that alarm, too. No, I guess it's alright. I, I guess um, the sort of configuration where I saw bad opportunities in the late 80s was actually with the updated real solar system since 1.2.2 and it isn't applicable in this version of RSS. 
which actually has the planets in somewhat different positions. Okay, let's see what that burn did for our orbit. Well, apparently that's where we wanted to be. But I'm not sure why we wanted to be all the way out here. Hmm. Okay, well that looks a lot better. Well, I'll do that for now, and here I'll make a maneuver to finish off flattening it out a bit. But it doesn't look like we're gonna get perfectly in line with the moons. And if we want to, we can pull it in more. But maybe that'll depend on what we want to do with this particular tug. Basically, it's a tug for Jupiter. So, 155 meters per second, and that's where we'll be. We can get rid of that alarm, and instead replace it with the new alarm for the new maneuver. That'll be a while, though. This is one of those missions we will not get to clear up. And since it's a nuclear engine, we probably want to keep it around anyway. It's advanced technology and everything. Okay, let's check out its companion, the other Jovian Demon that we launched. Okay, well, uh, checking out this Jovian Demon, its plotted course seems to be what I would have expected from the other one. So, I don't know about this other purple orbit hanging out and what... Uh, I guess that's alright, alright. Uh, anyway, but, yeah, uh, this is what I was expecting the other one to be plotted to do, and it was not doing that, and I had to make an additional correction, but... This seems to be alright. Let's time warp the 16 days and then we'll have it do that fix. Okay, we are definitely close to the maneuver this time. And node. So next time uh, we'll see why I decide as far as launching more Mars missions. We do have them constructed. But maybe, maybe we should hold off and make sure that we send newer technology instead of just the uh, same stuff that we've already sent. Okay, everything looks good. Ignition. There's a straight up inclination change. Well, that'll be nice and tight right there and relatively in line with the moons of Jupiter, so good times. We'll still put a maneuver at the start of the SOI, and we will add that to the alarm clock. Okay, well with that, we're just going to check out what we do with that Earth to Mars transfer window, and then proceed down the line until Ares Pod A gets back. We do need to bring back the crew from the moon port. Um, it's got 130 days. Really, I'd want to leave a substantial amount of that there. So maybe we'll bring them back even before we do any Mars missions that we want to send. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.